We're on a fiberglass pool installation. There's very little over excavation, just some gravel in and around that pool. We're using an equipotential bonding grid to ground that and it's installed and inspected for any kind of electrical shorts or lightning strikes. That's awesome. This is a hybrid installation. We're using open graded stone and open graded bedding layer with our blue grande slabs. We have a narrow transition or walkway around the pool on this side with our blue grande units. You can see the foam rod or backer rod is already being placed in this area. That's our expansion joint and an elastomeric joint compound. A self-leveling caulk will keep water from the coping onto our field moving quickly across that surface. Once we're done, we're just gonna sprinkle a little of our palmeric sand over the joints to match the color we choose for the rest of the project. The palmeric sand we're gonna use is G2 from FlexLock. It's rain safe in 15 minutes and silica free. Now it is impermeable, so water's gonna run down to our curb area here, which is our Raffinato three and a half inch. So because of that impermeability, we gotta allow water to get past the curb into our drainage bed, down to a drain tile, and out into the environment. To make sure that happens, we can either go with a corrugated plastic like this between the units, or a mason cord or a cotton sash. One of those two will work. Water enters here and off into the environment. I love that. We're eventually gonna have two water features adjacent to our G-Force wall. This wall is going in, the structural retaining wall is going in so quickly, it's astounding. Fernando, I have a question for you. As you're building this wall, every course, you core fill, taper fill, and backfill. Can you explain that to me? Yes, uh, this put, I uh, use uh, 57 gravel and put it in the, in the back of the block and inside the block and this in the field. Okay, so our entire soil reinforced zone, yes. that area stabilized by GeoGrid, yeah. is all clean stone. Yes. How do we make sure that's installed correctly? Uh, using my level, and this need to stay, the gravel need to put level. Yeah, level or slightly yeah. above, it's fine. We yeah. just don't want our no. grid dipping down. Yes. Yeah, that's correct. Now I do see that there's some gravel uh, on the block. How do yes. we make sure that it's clean? I, I use the bucket. A HEPA particle vacuum. Yes. Okay, so we're not using a broom no, or the no. back of our hands or anything silly no, no. like that. Yeah. Now I see the drain tile for behind my wall down there. Uh, where is that in the horizon of this wall? Okay, the pipe is still two inches on the base and two inches high. So it's actually yes. embedded in the base. The base yes. That's one of the benefits of using clean mm -hmm. stone as a yeah. base. We can get it very low in the horizon, catch that water, and it's yeah. daylighted. Yeah. Correct? Okay, good. Now we're using Uni Axial Grid, strength in one direction. Can you yeah. explain the installation okay. to me? Okay. okay, and you're very careful yes. to bring it completely to the face yeah. or the face of the chamfer of the block. Yeah. So it's a uni axial grid, strength in one direction. How do we make sure that it's tensioned properly? Okay, let's put a gravel and behind the block to the back. Oh, so as we set the block, yeah. we backfill from the back of the wall towards yeah. the tail of the grid. Thank you, Fernando, okay, I appreciate it. Using Techo Block's free design service on grid placement, depth, and type, this job has been kept on budget and on schedule. Everybody gets together, we lay it out, we put the level on it. Everybody understands, yeah, let's go build it. Industry standard installation, no callbacks, no problems, no settlement against the pool. If you sweep the block off, you're introducing airborne respiratory silicates. This solves all that. You're, instead of introducing it into the environment, you're capturing it. A tremendous value for our industry and it's gonna save a lot of lives.
You can see the elevation change between the cap and the surrounding slope of the landscape. There's a positive pitch of water away from my wall. That's exactly what we want. We've got a return wall going in here and a few more blocks and the bones of this poolscape makeover will be in. One of the design elements we really love is this onyx black architectural cap. It's rock textured and it's flush with our G4 smooth texture. So we have a contrast of texture and color. We're gonna cap that wall again with onyx black with a little bit of overhang in the architectural cap. Now that drip edge that we cut in there is a half inch back, a quarter inch deep. That will make sure that any water in the environment that may wrap around that cap will drip free of the wall. That will resist staining. Now those cuts were made with the world saw. This saw with an adapter to a generator or a 220 outlet. It's the IQ 1550. The 550 is millimeters. That's the size of the blade, 21 and a half inches. This G-force block at eight inches tall can be cut with one pass. With silent blade technology and tuned vacuums and auto spin filter, it is changing the game. Now, Matt, I know you run the MS-362 every day. What are your impressions of the 1550? Yeah, with running the 362 every day, we're gonna buy this 1550. Like you said, with this 21 and a half inch blade, we can make these eight inch block cuts with one pass onto the next one. We also have this locking lever mechanism that we can set our depths, that we cut our drip edges into caps. Yeah, that we're gonna do all the way across there. Yes, sir. Now, how is your team acclimated to this new saw? They love it and they can't get off of it. Okay, so all we gotta do is get the steps and we're ready for paving. Yes, sir. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Pete.